question. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, good evening, Professor. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Yeah, fine, fine. Okay, okay. That's good. Yeah. Okay, now uh, shall we start today's my talk? Okay, uh, I will talk again about the technique for dual AC screw. Um, this is a universal technique for the all kind of fixation for femoral neck fracture. So I believe the pre-operative marking is very important to do uh, the very smooth and uh, operation without the trouble, any trouble. So this is the kind of planning. So after the reduction, I recommend to use a uh, goniometer to place the goniometer in front of the hip, patient hip. Of course, this angle is adjusted as the same angle as uh, the plate as you want to do, uh, as you want to use, or like this. For well, dual AC has 135 degrees in the angle is the plate and the screw. So I pick the goniometer at the angle of 135 and the place the in front of the hip and see the fluoroscope and adjust this line uh, for the perfect line, perfect weight for the screw. So then draw the line like this here and here on the skin. One is uh, the screw direction, screw weight. And the other one is lateral, uh, lateral cortex, lateral edge of the cortex. And then draw the line perpendicular to the lateral uh, line, this lateral cortex line. Then to set uh, to a theorem like this, to the incline uh, this theorem to uh, the femoral head center is come to the extent of femoral shaft axis. So we call it, this uh, view is uh, the horizontal axis, horizontal view. Uh, it is a so-called lateral view, but it is not a true lateral view because of some kind of oblique view. Uh, in terms of the hip axis, hip neck axis, to adjust and diversion of the hip to please incline uh, the CR and to adjust this line, count to the center of the femoral head. So it is quite very important, quite variable for the any type of hip fracture. Then, to draw the line like this on the two lateral view and don't draw the femoral shaft axis. And uh, skin incision will come here at the center of two lines on the femoral shaft, uh, femoral shaft drawing. So then uh, marks around two or three centimeter on the lateral side. So it is a perfect. You can only cut in here. Then you can smoothly insert the guide wire and the put in, insert uh, the plate and screw and pick the cortical screw with uh, of the plate. So again, uh, so incision should be made on the lateral the femoral axis on the two lateral view because. Uh, we can access to the best point to insert guide wire. It's direct to the femoral head center directly, straight away, straight forward. If you make the incision just lateral to the skin, we need to retract the skin. 
so it can uh, push the guide wire and the guide wire, guide wire insertion uh, should be incorrect. So this is a special technique for the dual SC screw. But some techniques Uh, CC can hear. or DHS. Okay, so basically, a dual AC screw has 135 degrees. However, the guide wire is uh, relatively thin, so around 2.0 or 3.5 in diameter. So uh, sometimes the wire can be kicked on the hard lateral cortex of the femur. So sometimes uh, this angle can be too steep than we desired. So to prevent this, I devised this guide, type of guide. This guide have the two nails. To put on these nails on the lateral cortex of the femur. Then to push uh, the both nailed on the lateral uh, cortex. So this angle is fixed at 135. In addition to prevent the kick on the lateral surface of the cortex, this point, contact point, is above the pin, insertion of the pin. That can prevent the bending or the kicking of uh, the guide wire. So, so I prefer to use like this, but currently I use the pin in the free hand. So I can remember the angle of uh, so the insertion in my hand. So uh, we don't use this one anymore. So free hand is the best, no error. Okay. Then, after the insertion of the guide wire just beneath the cortical cortex of the femoral head and measure the distance using the gauge. Then, uh, next step is the reaming. Reaming is a double reamer. This one is for the screw, it's a thin one. Uh, this is uh, the drip for the barrel that is the thinner, uh, thicker. So this is a two diameter of the step reamer, we call this step reamer. And then after the reaming inside the stabilizer, this is a really, really useful. So inserts the hole just made by the reamer and inserts uh, this stabilizer. So this axis is stabilized using the stabilizer. So because this is very tight, in uh, within the hole just being made. Then, so using this stabilizer inside the parallel guide to insert the second screw for the second uh, DRS screw. So center to center distance, we can choose, uh, we can choose the two types of this uh, parallel guide. One is uh, center to center distance is uh, 14 millimeter and another one is 16 millimeter. It is a depend on the size and the location of the first pin. Uh, normally a very small female, uh, we prefer to use 14 millimeter. Otherwise, I recommend to use the 16 millimeter. So if you insert uh, the first pin is uh, just above the calca femorale. The second pin should be uh, superior and a little bit anterior. And normally, uh, many surgeons prefer to insert a posterior screw, a second screw in the superior and slightly posterior. But I don't recommend to insert the second screw like this. The reason uh i will explain later anyway anyway uh, but uh this screw is uh this screw has a side plate so uh, bearless 
stabilis, uh, stabilization is very perfect. So it is not necessary to uh, insert just above the calcar femorale. So this system uh, is not, does not necessarily to the calcar uh, batteries. So anyway, so some, in most cases, there is some space between the calcar femorale and the first screw. It doesn't matter. So then inside the second screw, the parity to the first one. Then uh, we can rotate around the first. This is a stabilizer. Then we can rotate this power guide around this the first, first uh, nail, first stabilizer. Then we can adjust the best place to insert the second screw. So, uh, most, maybe most surgeons believe the second one should be the superior and a little bit the posterior, like this photo. But actually, uh, to place a little bit anterior is safer. So it can prevent the extra osseous insertion. Anyway, uh, you can rotate any angle. So you can insert a second screw. Or in the your desired place, because the second screw is just after anti-rotation screw. The main stabilization is provi provided by the first screw. It has uh, the side place, so it is very strong, just like the mini CHS. So then again, the, for the second uh, screw, uh, the step reamer, reaming using the step reamer. And then insert the first screw. Uh, this is the superior screw, uh, the thread barrel. And that means uh, the only the screw and the barrel that don't have doesn't have uh, the side plate uh, because this is just anti rotation. Okay, someone is coming. Oh, Jomiso. <laughs> Professor Jomiso. Okay. Yes, hi, Jomiso. So I'm explaining, uh, I'm talking about the DRAC screw. Uh, this is the device for femoral, uh, femoral neck fracture I devised. So uh, anyway, the first, so inside the thread barrel. So the thread barrel have the two screws. This is a screw of this screw head, and then that screw is in the on the barrel. So uh, it is inserted using the double screw, a double driver. And this is the four screw, and this is a four barrel. So insert and uh, rotate the uh, two drivers simultaneously. They insert the screw. And in the same time, inside the barrel and the twist, the largest uh, driver. Okay, so avoid interfere, interfere to both screw. They should be rotated simultaneously. Then inside the barrel, and then compression. After the, this screw is reach to the longest place, then screw never advance. The screw rotate at the same time. At that time, the femoral head bone will come here. That means the compression. Okay, so after the carefully twisting uh, the smaller, this one smaller screw, another smaller, uh, driver, the compression compression force can act between the bone fragment. Then remove uh, this stabilizer and then replace uh, to the this one plate barrel. Insert the plate barrel and the fix the screw again. After reach the longest. This uh, longest position of the screw, 
inside the barrel. Then carefully loaded the screw, then femoral head come narrow. That can cause the, uh, the fracture compression. This is the static compression. This is the compression. So, uh, as I said yesterday, uh, this round shape can provide uh, angular uh, the allowance. So, plus minus five degree is acceptable. So, you don't uh, twist hardly to place this plate on the perfectly on the lateral cortex. Uh, because of this shape, so uh, this uh, something space between the cortex and plate, proximal part of the plate can be accepted. Now, on the five millimeter, does the matter. But never to the twist the screw after the touch this part on the lateral cortex. Otherwise, uh, some breakage or some dis displacement can occur. So, uh, this, uh, there is uh, some pitfall. So, after the reach the longest place, uh, longest length into the barrel, then twisting the screw can compress the bone. But, but too much force can break the bone around the thread of the screw. So, the twist the carefully, rotate the uh, driver carefully, and never break the bone around the thread of the screw. And the second one is uh, this screw should be inserted inside the femoral head as deep as possible. Otherwise, this thread can uh, touch to the fracture fracture line. If this thread touch to the fracture line, after that, uh, sliding never occur. So it, it is very risky to uh, the subsequent cut off or, uh, or penetration of bone. Because compression movement on the sliding mechanism is very important to stable fixation and effective uh, the compression force. So if this screw never slides, the two bone fragment never compressed, it can uh, cause uh, increased risk of non-union or delayed union or even the friction, um, friction loss, such as cut off and the various deformity of the femoral head. So uh, we need to keep the space between the end of slit of screw and fracture line. So have a look. This uh, patient have fracture line is here, but thread of the screw is already uh, tied to the fracture line. So uh, this screw is very unstable, so we can keep some osteolysis around the screw. Maybe this can cause to buy uh, the touch, the pair of screw set to this fracture line. So it is the same thing, uh, the CHS and CCHS. So we should take care. Uh, to insert uh, this screw as deep as possible, just before the subchondral bone of the femoral head. So uh, sometimes plate overhang can occur uh, because during the procedure, that this short uh, short uh, plate can rotate easily. Uh, moreover, if this guide pin is inserted too steep as the defined angle of the plate. Uh, the, this can tend to be here. Uh, there is some space uh, between the plate here 
uh, the surface of the cortex. But uh, some, some, some scientists don't like to uh, see this space between the plate and the bone cortex, then uh, the surgeon pulls the plate. Then, uh, even this wire is inserted uh, the more steep than the 135 degrees, if the plate loaded, uh, this plate looks thick, completely thick on the lateral cortex of the femur. So after uh, this rotation of plate. Because mathematically, if you rotate uh, the plate posteriorly on the frontal view, uh, this angle can more steep. Then uh, the total, can, total contact is achieved. But uh, in this situation, it is very risky because if we uh, make the drill hole here, sometimes this penetrates the posterior cortex of the bone. It can cause the fracture of uh, subcontract, uh, subtrochantry fracture. Then, uh, this is um, uh, my talk about uh, technique of dual AC screw. And uh, this technique can be used for the other operations such as CCHS or uh, DHS or CHS. So uh, until now, do you have any question or any comment or any suggestion? Is every single clear? Yes, everything is clear. Okay. And the biomechanic and uh, your explanation, everything is very nice. Okay. But the only problem is the price matter. My country price. Yeah, cannot afford the price. Yes, because yes. Most of the implant from the China and India, they are copied yeah. from the chronic or Cindy's. Yeah. But the price is very low. I know. So, it's very important. Price, so, so. I'm just planning to manufacture this implant in China or other South Asian countries. Perfectly, yeah. if you manufacture this implant in your country, it is the best. But it is impossible. Even uh, other implant, we cannot produce in my country. Yeah, but I know, I know, I know. Normally, so we cannot so produce. But I believe your country has uh, the very so many good worker. Yeah, we yeah. have the raw because material yeah, and worker. Good worker uh, makes make the very good, beautiful design item. Yeah, using the metal. So metal manufacture is very very special. So very skilled yeah. in your country. Maybe I, in the near future, you can manufacture the your own implant in your country. So, yeah. so far, in the previously, uh, this type of implant is manufactured in China. But uh, recently, China is price is getting higher and higher. The main uh, factory is moved to other South Asian countries, such as Malaysia, uh, Thailand and Vietnam. Uh, maybe yeah. in the near future, this uh, stream will move to the Myanmar. Maybe, I yeah. think. But yeah. in the near future, I will import uh, this one in a very cheap price. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank, Thank you, Arigato you. Kozaimas. Jesus <laughs> Dimbate. Yes. <laughs> So uh, I want to talk about a uh, little bit about my explan uh, experience of this component implant. So I used uh, this implant in, by at the end of the 2017, 159 chips in 159 patients. So uh, the most of uh, most patient was the female. The average was 73 years. 
I believe this is a little bit lower. Maybe in the recent years, uh, recent three or four years, this uh, mean average they're getting higher and higher, maybe over 80s. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. So maybe the trochanter factor is average age should be the 86 or 85. Very, very old in my country. So most, of course, most patient was non-displaced fracture, uh, such as garden stage one or two. But uh, we uh, always use the isoplasty for the displaced fracture. But some uh, special situation, such as a young patient or a very old patient are with a high risk. Uh, sometimes we select the, uh, the internal fixation for the displaced fracture. Uh, number is very low. So I followed up an uh, average of two years, uh, at least six months. So we assessed about the complication and the working ability uh, after the two years. More results, complication was of course uh, the 25 hips, the 15% in total. The non displaced fracture is around 13%. The displaced, uh, displaced fracture is more than two, uh, 20%. Yes, yeah, so this is a revision of the arthroplasty was uh, done in 15 hips, around 10%. A non displaced one is 6.8, and displaced one is 3 hips. And this is the list of uh, the complication. So most uh, frequent complication was dislocation, uh, such as the shortening of the fracture and some cut out. Uh, and sometimes we experience the subtrochantric uh, fracture and uh, sometimes a vaccine necrosis. Uh, secondary displacement is very common. It occurs 30 hips. Uh, most uh, interestingly, most fracture of was non-displaced fracture. So such as like this, like this. So we believe uh, non-displaced fracture is uh, sometimes uh, serious compression can occur such as uh, cut, out, cut out or uh, dislocation of the hip. Well, this is uh, maybe most surgeon diagnose classified uh, this uh, fracture as a non-displaced fracture but in stage one. But after the implantation, but unfortunately this position is a little bit high, almost the center of the femoral head. Of course, this plate has, uh, this screw has the side plate like this. So it uh, doesn't necessarily to insert just above the calca femorale to achieve three point fixation. But if I insert the first one here, as I said before, the second one is come higher. And uh, on this uh, screw, the screw thread comes just above the fracture line. So at this time, the screw uh, thread already touched the fracture. So uh, this patient, the sliding never occurred. So the femoral neck uh, femoral head is stabilized without the sliding. Then it is quite uh, dangerous. It can easily cause uh, the cutout or various displacement of uh, the femoral head. So uh, this type of fracture, this type of implant, the sliding mechanism is mandatory. So otherwise it can uh, displace easily. So because, <laughs> this is a thing. So 
this uh, is the femoral head, this is the neck. If uh, the weight bearing is act here, then this force uh, come to the compression force like this. If the sliding mechanism uh, works very well, but otherwise sometimes it is locked. Look, uh, her leg head like here is completely locked. Then it is quite easy to break without uh, the sliding. If this sliding, this force uh, converted to the compression force along uh, this screw. So the sliding mechanism is very diff uh, important. Otherwise, this femoral head bone is very weak due to the osteoporosis. Because mainly this fracture is caused by osteoporosis. So a very simple falling or very minor fracture can cause this type of fracture. So this femoral head is very, very fragile. So we need to uh, combat this weight, uh, weight bearing force to the compression force around the, uh, the hip screw. So if this mechanism is locked, this screw never slide. So compression force never act uh, between the one fragment. So then it can cause uh, the dislocation or uh, the cutout like this. And then the three hip occurred cut out like this. Then uh, a half patient needed the arthroplasty, such as bipolar or total hip. Oh, and sometimes uh, a vascular necrosis would occur uh, six, six hips, something like this. Uh, we call it a late segmental collapse. Uh, this uh, is uh, some kind of a vascular necrosis. <clears throat> but fortunately, some uh, vascular necrosis is uh, the no pain, no symptom. So uh, we displayed hip. Uh, luckily, I treated one hip is a very uh, typical uh, vascular necrosis, but we could treat this patient conservatively. But most, most patients need arthroplasty. Maybe this is also caused by uh, the unstable fixation of the fragment. And subtrochanteric uh, uh, sub fracture in sometimes occur. It's occurred only three hips. But unfortunately, this fracture is concentrated to the one surgeon, one operator. 